12. All right, uh, we should be recording now. So if you're watching the recording, hello. Um, I should probably hide this. All right. Um, looks like not many people here for some reason. Uh, hopefully we'll be joining soon. And yeah, so I guess if uh, how many of you guys did the homework that uh, was posted and stuff? Just want to check. Um, we can go over the homework, or if not many people did it, yeah, we see two people. I want to make sure I don't, you know, go over a bunch of homework problems that nobody did. So, yeah. Um, do you guys want to go over the questions, or just go into the lesson today? Uh, if you haven't checked, um, you know, there's no, there's no submitting the homework it's just optional um the the homework is online okay looks like a lot of people want to go to lesson so i guess that's what we're going to do unless the other three people say otherwise okay so um yeah the homework is optional and whoa the chat no homework that's two two to one if you're just joining i'm asking do we want to go over the homework or going to the questions so if you check on the website um, the homework solutions and questions are uh, were added like a few days ago. So okay, looks like three people have said lessons. So I guess that's what we're doing. Um, that is at least the majority. Yeah, some of the problems are AMC, AME, the things you can look up. So yeah, and if you there's a solution anyway. I posted them recently. All right, I guess we'll go over this then. Hopefully you can see this. All right. Um, Gumball Dumball has been um, outvoted. All right. So I guess we'll start in probability today. Yes, I, I know your real name, but your name in the Google Meet is Gumball Dumball, so that is your official name, um, unless you change it. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, I guess we'll start with basic probability. Um, yeah, so, yes, that is my name. What would you like? The link is not on the website. Uh, let me check. This is already getting recorded, by the way. Um, what do you mean by... Oh, you mean the link to this thing. I wasn't aware those were on the website at all. Um, I thought we just checked the calendar. Uh, let me see. Um, yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't aware there was even a link. There was supposed to be a link. There is a code, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, it's in, it's in the Google Calendar. I don't know. Is it supposed to be somewhere else? I wasn't aware that there was somewhere else it was supposed to be. Okay. Alright, so... I guess we'll start with basic probability. So, um, hopefully you guys know what like probability means. Um, it's, you know, the chance that something happens. So, okay, uh, let's see. Alright, it works. All right, well, I don't know what's going on in the chat. So, probability is basically the number of total valid cases over the number of total cases. Let's do a countdown. Run. I don't know. I don't know about that one. Maybe. I mean, not today. Obviously, I don't have anything prepared. So yeah, um, I already see one over thirty-six. I mean, this is just probability basics. It's valid cases over total cases. So really, a lot of probability questions are just for the sample problems, I mean, you can just do those, I guess, if you want. It's not like I have the answers, like, with me. I just do them while I explain it, so. I mean, you can do that if you want, I guess, but I won't, like, make it official or anything. So, yeah, probability is total ca valid cases over total cases. Um, so, let's actually look down here. If two fair dice are rolled, what's the probability that both of them are one? Well, there's only one way for them to both be one. 
And how many ways are there for them to land? Well, the first die has six options, and then the second die has six options. So the answer is 1 over 36. Now, since um, we, when we did counting last week, the cases were all multiplicative, as in you can multiply independent events. So the probabilities can also be independent events. So yeah, I see in the chat, if you do just one of them, landing on a 1 is 1 sixth. The other one landing on a 1 is 1 sixth, so you get 1 over 36. Um, yeah, I mean, that's really the basics here. Hopefully no questions yet. Yeah, um, I have probability, but um, actually a lot of probability actually is just counting, so I'm also going to have other things like Pascal's triangle and other combinatorial things about that. Um, hopefully we don't have... I, I, I don't think, I think there's going to be a lot of material today, also a lot of harder questions. My video is lagging. Yeah, um, I don't know. Uh, I, I guess I just can't keep up with really fast stuff. Yeah, expected value is also, I mean, there's a few parts of counting and probability that are not um, covered yet, so maybe we'll have a third week for that, uh, I guess with a lot of example problems as well. Okay, so since a lot of probability questions are just simply counting questions, um, a lot of just basic counting principles apply. So, remember we talked about what is it? Complementary counting. We talked about, um, I mean, constructive counting. I guess also casework. We have, um, you know, so you can use stars and bars sometimes. You can use other things. Um, so if you just split it up into two counting questions, sometimes it becomes like much easier. Yeah. Um, yeah. Probability is always between zero and one, which is zero percent and one hundred percent. So if you, um, what kind of principle don't apply? I mean, I think everything should apply in in some cases. Like, if you just have a counting question, you could probably change it into a probability questions. So, yeah. So let's try some of these questions here, I guess. I'm forgetting this is getting recorded, so I shouldn't move my mouse around. This is getting recorded, right? I just want to check. All right. Any ideas? Yeah, um, the goal of this problem was actually complementary counting, but I messed up the problem wording. Um, if it said it does contain the digit 5, it would be complementary, but <laughs> I, I kind of said does not. Um, so it's just constructive counting, I guess. Okay. So, basically it's like four digits, right? There's four digits. Um, and if they're all zero, it can be 10,000. And if it doesn't contain the digit five, how many choices are there for the first digit? Okay, yeah. Um, I see eight times nine times nine there, but um, actually we're allowing one to 10,000, uh, 10, right? So it doesn't have to be a four digit number. So you're allowed to do zero. Because if you do like zero five three six, that's a valid number. I mean, it it contains your five, but otherwise it's yeah, it's good. So there's actually just nine ways for each of these, nine choices, and if they ha all happen to be zero, then you know the answer is just uh, it, let's just say the number is ten thousand, right? Because there's no zero, but there is a ten thousand. So yeah, I see nine to the fourth power equals six five six one. That's the total number of valid numbers that don't have the digit five. Um, yeah, so it's it's not six five six zero because we remember we exclude zero, 
but we do include 10,000. So yeah, um, make sure you get those edge cases and don't, yeah. So the total number of cases is obviously 10,000. So that's our probability. Cool, any questions? If not, go on to the second question. Oh, wait, okay. This is an interesting, okay. I don't know what I was doing. I, this should probably say 10. I, I kind of meant for this to say 10. All right. Um, um, let, let's change this to 10. Um, I, was, I was intending for this to be 10 coins. Um, 1 over 32 would be correct if it was 5. Yeah, sorry, guys. Let's tr let's try this question instead. Oops. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Pascal's is does have the combination things, but I mean it's more like a combination. So, yeah. Um. We again do total number of cases over total possible cases and um, yeah so if if you just don't know how to do like a probability question always remember you just do like total number of cases over the total possible cases um, just always remember that's how you do it and you don't even if you like you know do probability things yeah Actually, I think I saw some of them in the AMC class, which just ended. Yeah. So the total number of ways you can get five heads is there's ten there's ten coins, and you pick five of them to be heads. So it's ten choose five ways um, to choose which ones are heads. And then there's a total number of two to the ten possible ways that the coins can land. So this becomes, just after simplification, 252 over 1024 which is, I saw in the chat, 63 over 256, I believe. So, yeah. Um, I'll change it in the PowerPoint once I upload it. But, yeah. So, yeah. Um, combinations, hopefully you remember from the last week, is 10 factorial over 5 factorial 5 factorial. That's the formula for combinations. So, yeah. All right, any questions? Where are the slides uploaded? They should be on the website. I'll post the link. All right. All right. Um, next slide. Okay. So, uh, hopefully you guys don't hear that lawnmower. It's pretty loud. Um, you probably do. Whatever. That's loud. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's cool. So conditional probability is an interesting like thing that's you know exclusive to probability. Um, there's no like conditional counting, and it's it's this form. So this means the probability of B given A. So that's what conditional probability is. It's not just find the probability that something happens, but you have to find the probability given that something else happens. And to find that you can just find the probability that A and B happens over the probability that only A happens. So yeah, this I, I'm going to give a few like pretty well-known examples to show conditional probability. Since, yeah, um, so oh, I guess I'll write it out. B, B bar A means, that's not an A, B given A. So assuming A is true, it's the probability that B is true. So if, if it says here, like, eh, it's, this is not, like, the best example of conditional probability, but it's, like, given that one of them is a goat, what's the probability if you switch or stay? You learned in geometry. Really. Interesting. 
I, I guess I want to ask. Oh, at your school. That's interesting. All right. Yeah. So I'm thinking like a few of you have already seen this problem, but you guys should read it. Uh, I guess I'll just finish this here. A. Yeah, so these can be actually really unintuitive, although usually they're not as confusing as the ones I'm going to show you. How is the formula derived? Well, you have to assume that uh, A is given, right? So if A is not true, like if, if A is not um, true, then we don't even have to consider it. Like it doesn't matter. Um, so that's why the denominator is PA, because it only matters when A is true. And then the numerator is... Well, B has to be true because the probability is B given A. And we already assumed A had to be true because otherwise it doesn't even matter. So basically, if A is not true for some reason, then we don't even have to consider the case. Yeah. Um, if you have a train. I mean, trains, unless you have the train, if, if there exists a train, you're going to get COVID. So cars are more exclusive. All right. So... How many, what sort of game show is this? I don't know. Yeah, so B, uh, B given A means the probability that B happens assuming that A also happens. So, I don't know. Um, the probability that it's sunny is like, reasonably, it's like 50%, I don't know. But if it's given that it's raining, it's, it's 0% because it can't be both, although it can be both. So whatever. Not a good example, but like, whatever. Um, okay, so I guess we'll do this problem here. So there's three doors, and you pick one of them. You pick this one. And the host doesn't, like, you know, give you open the door yet. It opens another door and says this one is not the right one. So you're, you're not picking this door because it's a bad door. Assuming you want the car, yeah. And... Now you have a choice of one or two of them, and you either uh, switch or stay. <laughs> so, yeah, if if you if you switch, you're more likely to win a car. It's two thirds, and if you stay, it's one third. Um, an intuitive explanation uh, is that the first door is one third. Uh, if you if you pick a door, the probability that you pick the car is obviously one third, and the host can always open a door. So it doesn't matter if they open, like, which door it opens. It, it's still one-third that your original pick is correct, and it's two-thirds on the other door because they have to add up to one. Yeah. Um, I mean, is this conditional probability? Kind of. Yeah, I'm actually not sure this is conditional probability, but it's close enough, I guess. <laughs> Um, I mean, it's just a good example, you know. Um, I'll actually go on to the next question. Uh, these are also other unintuitive questions. All right. Let's first do the first one. First one is... Uh, I'll, I'll give you guys a little more time to read the question. Alright, so the first one is not a trick question. If, if, if the oldest one is a girl, then it's independent of the uh, other child, the younger child. So it's one half. Alright. Looks like everyone's posting answers. And the next one is not, it, it is a trick question, so the answer is not one half. Um, All right, make sure to like think about the problem instead of yeah, so a lot of conditional probability questions you have to be you have to like you should probably think about the formula uh given on the previous page, even if it seems like obvious, you should probably not make intuitive things, so I'm seeing quite a few answers, so okay, probability of boy given girl equals probability of boy and girl over probability of a girl. So this is the formula from the other page. Okay, what is the probability that a family has both a boy and a girl? 
uh, if it's two children. One half, yeah. Because there's two ways for them to have uh, one of each gender, so that's BG or GB, and there's four total cases, which is two squared. So this is one half, and what's the probability that they have at least one girl? Um, what? Uh, they have two children. What's the probability that they have at least one girl? Um, remember that this isn't like conditional probability. This is like, yeah, so it's three-fourths because there's a one-fourth chance they have both boys. Um, when I said like you, you have to exclude the cases, what I meant is like you have to exclude it like in this case. What, what you're, I think what you're trying to do is like you're doing like girl given girl for everyone that said one. Um, I mean, that just, that makes no sense, yeah. So, when we do these probabilities, we have to make sure that they're, like, of all the sample spaces. So, boy and girl is of all, all four possibilities, and the probability that there's at least one girl given four births, I mean, not four births, four options, is three-fourths. Because you can have BG, GB, or GG. And this evaluates to two thirds. So if you if you like survey a bunch of families with two two children, um, if one of them if if a family has a girl, they're more likely for the other one to be a boy. And that you know kind of makes sense. I mean, I guess we're excluding twins and stuff, um, but let's keep it simple, right? The third question is hard enough as it is. All right, um, that that's like an intu unintuitive, but like, it's um, a good example of why conditional probability is sometimes confusing. And are there any questions about number question two before we go on to number three? Um, yeah. So the one part would be the thing that makes it weird. So um, one of the children makes it conditional probability. Uh, we could actually do the first one as conditional probability. Um, I guess we could do that too. Um, so I mean, we could do like probability that the first one is a girl and then the second one, that's a G, that's a 6. 1G, 2B over probability that just the first one is a girl. And if we did that, it's just one fourth over one half. Um, boy and girl, because um, there's four possibilities, right? You could have two boys. Uh, you could have boy and then a boy. You could have a boy then a girl, a girl then a boy, or a girl then a girl. And out of those four cases, two of them have one of each. Yeah. So make sure, yeah, conditional probability. Um, the the when when you get like a probability question, and like one of the results are already given, it, it makes it conditional. So instead of just what's the probability that they're both boys or whatever, um, you're given that one of them is a girl. So that's why it's conditional probability. All right. Um, does anyone want to do question three? It's interesting. Let me actually do it in another color. All right, one half is a guess, but it is not a good guess. <laughs> yeah, so you would have to use the formula. It's not two thirds either. N no, no, you're, you're not gonna get it unless you solve it. Yeah, so we'll see how it matters. I mean, you're, you're not gonna get it. Your, your numbers are too small in the fraction. Now they're they're way too small. <laughs> we can just wait until he gets it. Um, it's not ninety nine percent. That makes no sense. What? Okay. So um, I don't know if I have much space here, but let's do the same conditional probability as before. So, what's the um, thing on the numerator? What should it be? 
given the conditional probability. Um, in, in the formula, what should the numerator be? Uh, it's not just boy and girl because one, one, uh, there's more information given. Also, that's interesting spelling. Boy, yeah. So the numerator is the probability that there is a boy and a girl on a Wednesday. And the denominator is. Yeah, just just the girl on the Wednesday. All right. So evaluating each of these is kind of confuse, uh, kind of hard to do. Um, girl on a Wednesday is one over three sixty five. That doesn't seem right. Yeah. Um, it would be one. It would be one fourteenth if there was just one, one child, right? Any child has a one seventh, one fourteenth chance of being a girl and on Wednesday because it's a half chance for a girl and then one seventh for Wednesday. So let's let's put it up here. The probability that it's a girl on a Wednesday is one fourteenth um, for one child. How do we find the probability that at least one child is um, a girl on a Wednesday? What principle can we use? Remember the keyword at least. Complex, complementary, yeah. Um, yeah, complementary counting works for this. So if there's two children, The probability is 1 minus 13 over 14 squared. Does anyone understand this? Which is this? Um, 13. So we're doing we're we're doing 1 minus the probability that both of them are not um, girls on a Wednesday. So the probability that someone is not a girl on a Wednesday is 13 over 14. So the probability that both of the children are not is 13 over 14 squared. And then you subtract that from 1, if that makes sense. All right. Now let's do the numerator. Um, I guess I'll do it down here. All right, how can we evaluate this probability? Does that mean one fourteenth equals twenty seven one ninety six? It does not. What do you mean by zero? I uh Yeah, so one over twenty eight is close. Um by counting the opposite. Well, one fourth is for one child, and then twenty seven over one ninety six is for two children. Um, so one over, eight, 1 over 28 is close. 1 over 7 is also close. It's equally close. Uh, that, well, that's actually... <laughs> you're doing all the... Yeah, 1 over 14, I believe. So, the reason why this is true is because you can, you can have either order, right? You could have a boy, then a girl on a Wednesday, or you could have a girl on a Wednesday, and then a boy. So that's two, right? There's two ways to order it. And then um, Rohan's original answer is correct. It's um, one half for a boy, and then one fourteenth for a girl on Wednesday. Um, ooh. And that's one fourteenth. And I ran out of space, but we can evaluate this to get why is there spam? All right. So the probability we get is 14 over 27. We multiply by 2 because it can be either order. We can have a boy, then the girl on a Wednesday, or we can have a girl on a Wednesday, then the boy. So if we just did like 1 half times 1 over 14, then that would be the probability that the first one is a boy, and then the second one is a girl on a Wednesday. So by multiplying by 2, we get 
both orders. Let me see if I missed any questions because of the spam. All right. All right. So I mean, those are confusing. <laughs> oh, my videos. <laughs> my videos lagging. All right. Um, my video won't be in the video except for now. Hi, it's me. All right. Um, let's go back to what, what's going on. Okay. Yeah. So, any questions? Because that was not the easiest question. Yeah. Where else can we learn conditional? Um, a lot of books, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure how to answer that. There's like, I mean, anywhere you learn common counting and probability, you'll probably also learn conditional. Um, uh, you can also try alchemist or whatever. Was that a Nats? Um, I don't know. I, it's not really a math class question, I think. I just made it up. I don't think I made it up. I think I found it. I think I remember it from somewhere, and it was like a fun problem. But it's like such an, such an interesting and like... It's just like a simple question, but it, it just has an answer of 14 over 27. Alright, I guess we'll move on then. Alright, so... Another thing in... Yeah, <laughs> yeah it be was for that. Alright. Yeah. Okay. So, sometimes, when we do probability, uh, the number of cases can be infinite. So both of these can be infinity. So you get like infinity over infinity, which is like undefined. Um, yeah, it looks like a lot of spam in the chat. So if you look at the problem here, um, they they arrive at a uniformly random time. So it's not like there are like six possible cases like for a die, but instead there are infinitely many. So instead of doing like some um infinity over infinity uh it's a lot of thing uh like if you look on aops uh, if you guys don't that know what that is it's there's a lot of questions about infinity on middle school math and the answer to most of them is just it's it's not defined because infinity is like not a thing infinity is not like a number that you can manipulate it's just some some concept so you can't just cancel them out because it's like weird um, like if you think about it, two times infinity equals infinity, right? So if you divide both sides by infinity, you get two equals infinity over infinity, which is equally valid. So yeah, um, you can't you can't do anything with infinity. It's kind of weird. And there's like multiple types of infinity as well. So sometimes infinity over infinity can be infinity. Yeah. Alright, so you guys should work on the problem if you haven't started already. Although I guess I'll show us an example. You've seen this, yeah, this is a pretty common type of question. It's also, I mean, it's pretty common for some reason. Um, I don't know why, but... Yeah. Really, you remember the exact times? I feel like this question you should have seen like multiple times before. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. So, how you do this problem is you you do like uh, areas. So, this is the possible like space of all the all the wrong things. So this is, let's say this is the time that the first person arrives. This is the time that the second person arrives. So this is 10 a.m. and this is 11 a.m. Um, these points here, this point and this point. And it's the same on this side. So A picks a random side, a random point here. Let's say A picks this point and then B picks this point. And so the possible point that you could, be, you could pick is that and we want to find the area the area of the points where the two people meet 
and divide it by the total number of people, uh, the total number, the total area of possible points. So, um, yeah, there's not really much space. Hopefully, you guys can see this. What's the one thirteenth? Um, what's the uh, what's the shape of the area where the two people meet? A hexagon, yeah. So, if if person A arrives at ten a.m., let's say, then B can arrive at at most um, ten fifteen. So it has to be there. And if if A arrives at you know some other time, B has to follow this line. That's that's the latest that B can arrive, and the earliest that B can arrive is this line. So the valid region is this area here. Um, um, that's an interesting chat. All right. So uh, you guys can find the area of this, hopefully. Um, you guys didn't go to the geometry class, but Hopefully you guys know how to find the area of this. Um, we'll do we'll do geometry probably sometime later. Although it's probably going to be Alex doing it. And you get the probability is seven over sixteenth. Um, you just find the area of this thing, which is seven, if if the side lengths are four, and then the area of the entire square is sixteen. And actually, for this, you could uh, do complementary area, kind of. That's probably a better idea. Because the triangles are easier to find the area than the actual hexagon in the middle. Yeah. All right, let's see if I have example questions. I do. All right. So we probably won't have much time for a bunch of these questions, but whatever. Yeah, 45 squared over 60 squared is the area that they don't meet because if you if you combine the two triangles together, you get a square that's 45 by 45, and the entire square is 60 by 60. So you evaluate that um, thing up there, and then you get 1 minus 1 minus 45 squared over 60 squared equals number 16. All right. Pi over sixteen one fourth one half. Um okay. So what 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 jump what geometry thing did you do? Like what type of shape did you guys make? A rectangle shape. Um the problem is that there's three numbers, right? And they're all independent. So You would have to do something else. Yeah, yeah. If it was two numbers, the answer would be one eighth, right? If it was if, if it was two, it would be one eighth. Unfortunately, it is three numbers. Yeah. So if it's three, since it's three numbers, you have to do three D geometry, which is kind of confusing um, to draw. Let me try to draw the best I can here. Um, it'll take a lot of visualization to f realize this. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So this is the possible sample space. Let's say this is zero and stuff. I'm not sure where we're getting all the pies from. Yeah, so 1 over 48 is correct. And let's see how we, how, it, how it works. So, what's the area of, what's the volume in this case, right? So there's three variables, so what's the volume of possible regions where the sum is less than 0.5? Um, 
Um, okay, yeah, one is the total area. Uh, let's say all the sides lengths are one. Then the total area is one. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. So less than one, I actually changed it to 0.5. So less than one would be the full um, a pyramid. I, I guess I'll draw it here. Hopefully you guys have like tried to figure out what the pyramid would be. Um, it's, it's this pyramid here. And it's the area, it's region here. So it's like a small corner of the um, cube. And we basically just had to find the volume of this. So um, the volume of a pyramid is one third. So yeah, the drawing of the red region is obviously the most important part. Um, if you think about just a square, you're going to get uh, this line, because that's y, x plus y. Um, ooh. By the way, it doesn't matter if it's less or less than or equal to, so that's an important thing to note. So this is, this is the region here in two dimensions. So in three dimensions, it's like that, um, but in all three, so it's it's that it's like that in all three um, faces that are next to the zero. So this face here, I guess I'll draw it in green. This face here, uh, this face here, and then this face here. Um, yeah, this is probably very confusing, but I'll erase all this. Um, yeah. So it'll take some visualization. Hopefully, you guys. I mean, I can't really explain it that well just through this, but it, it's a pyramid around the zero here, and it's it's just this thing. So if you find the volume of this, it's one third times the base times the height. Um, the area of the base is one half, which is one half times length times width. Uh, this is kind of running out of space. Ooh, I can't, I can't draw the closing. And then times one half, which is the height, and we get one over forty-eight. Ooh, that's not, that's not good. Okay, yeah. So that's an important question. If is it a dotted line or is it a solid line? Um, when you're like graphing inequalities. Uh, if you did that in algebra class, uh, then obviously the um, dotted and not dotted mat matters. But if you're doing like geometric probability, um, imagine picking like three random numbers, right? The probability that their sum is exactly 0.5 is zero. There's there's no way it's going to be exactly 0.5. It's going to be like 0 0.50015, 0 something like that. So yeah, it doesn't matter if it's dotted or not. You have to just find the uh, volume because if you can imagine the uh, the whether it's lined or dotted. Like it's like a slice of the, um, uh, it's like it's like a plane, so it doesn't actually have volume. It just has an area, which doesn't matter. Five thirds, five thirds. Yeah, that's that's in the middle of the thing. All right. So it it, it may require some visualization, but whatever. All right, I'll I'll write some things for the second question. So the magnitude. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the magnitude. The absolute value is just the different the distance from zero. Okay. All right. Um, I don't know where I can really draw this. Let's try here. Yeah, it's too big. Okay. So, do you guys understand why this is a triangle?
Okay. Hello. Um, all right. So let's say the x-axis. Let me actually delete this and make it again. Uh, oops. Let's say this is a a-axis. This is the a-axis. And this is the b-axis. Um, that's backwards. Let's say this is b and this is a. Um, we assumed here that A is less than B here. So uh, this is the region where A is less than B. The other region is where A is greater than B. So we're, we only care about this case here. <laughs> oh no. All right. So what we have here is this is negative 1, this is 0, this is 1. Um, this is negative 1, this is 0, this is 1. So let me draw a dotted line here. All right. Can anyone, like, figure out the region where this is, uh, the pro the condition is true, where absolute A is greater than 2 absolute B? So absolute values are weird. Um, it is not in the... Uh, dotted lines. It's it's a little bit more complex. So you're gonna have to like. It's it's kind of difficult because absolute values are weird. So you may have to consider cases. So let's say both a and b. Let's say a is greater than zero and b is greater than zero. Then can a be greater than two b? No, because a is less than b. Um, if you draw, if you try try to draw it here, it will be this region here, which is not in the er in the area, so it doesn't matter. Oh yeah, guys, there there's a tropical geometry seminar, um, which is you know interesting topic, I guess. It's 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 interesting. It's weird. It's a weird topic. It, it, it's probably I mean advanced for math counts and also AMC. Um, Daniel Shu will be the um, will be teaching or giving the seminar, I guess. All right, so this this has no cases. Uh, let's try a is less than zero and b is greater than zero. So in this case, what do we get? If we remove the absolute values, what do we get? Anyone? So since a is less than 0, absolute a is negative a, always. And since b is greater than 0, 2b is always, I mean, 2 absolute b is always 2b. So what you get if you manipulate it is a is less than negative 2b. Yeah, so you get negative a is greater than 2b. And if you multiply both sides by negative 1, you have to switch the sign. That's what you have to do in inequalities. And you get a is less than negative 2b. So what you get is this area here. All right. And finally, if a is less than 0 and b is less than 0, then what do we get? <laughs> yeah. Pineapples and coconuts. That's exactly what tropical geometry is. Yeah, so you get negative a is greater than negative 2b, um, and then if you multiply both sides by negative 1, you have to again switch the sign, so you get a is less than 2b. So the area of that is here. Does this, is this clear to everyone? Okay. Those question marks. Um, why is a? Yeah, why why is a greater than two b if a is greater than b and b a is greater than zero and b is greater than zero? Um, well, that's just what you get from the thing here. And obviously, this is not possible. Um, I I said here it would be it would have to be this region here, which is not in the valid um, triangle, the green triangle. It's not in the green triangle. So uh, this region. 
this region here is not one of the, is a valid case. Um, only the ones in this triangle count. And it makes sense. If A is less than B, it can't be also greater than 2B. Yeah, so what you get if you evaluate the areas is you get an area of like 1 half over 2. And so the answer is 1 fourth. Uh, it's going over the thing, but I don't have much space. So 1 fourth is the answer. Okay, yeah. Um, so, okay. Um, tropical geometry is like, instead of addition, imagine that you had... Yeah, don't do not do that. Yeah, so instead of, of plus, it's um, min. And in, instead of of times, it's plus. So that's what it is. Anyway, or it's max. It's other one. It's there's conventions. Max and yes. Okay. So how do we get one half in the numerator? Um, the total area of the red figure is one half. Um, because this this region, this this length is one. And the height is also 1. So you get half base times height is half times 1 times 1 equals 1 half. Alright, any questions about geometric probability? You guys are going to have a fun question later in the homework if you do it. Do it. Okay. So let's try a few more miscellaneous questions. These are random ones I found in like 2002 or so. Um, math counts 2001, 2 or 3, somewhere around there. Not sure why OK thanks is sick. Yeah, so I can't find a really easy way to do this because I mean there's really no easy way to do it. So I guess casework have to, would have to be the best way to do it. Sick means that your grammar was wrong, which I don't think it is. I mean, obviously it's wrong, but that's because it's we're just you know using. I mean, all of these are wrong, right? Naz not capitalized. Gnome is in Rome is not capitalized. Half of these have no periods. I mean, Ben's message also has no period. I mean, come on. Anyway, that doesn't really matter. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, all right. So in this case, you just use total uh, valid number over total. So, yeah, I mean, that would be correct, but who actually wants to type that? 3 over 70, that sounds, that seems pretty small. That, that sounds like the answer to an Amy question this year. I don't know, it seems familiar. I don't know why I remember this. All right. Small like your brain. Don't say that. <laughs> it's not. It's not that small. <laughs> okay. Uh, Twenty-seven. I think you're just making stuff up. Um, I don't think the denominator is even seventy. So I don't know what you're doing. Wow. I don't think that's big. I don't know. Maybe it is. Okay. So we could do casework. Yeah. That's what I was saying. 3 over 70 seems like an Aomi question, or it could be just Amy. I don't know. If I have no idea. Medium. Okay. So, let's do casework on the smallest number, right? So, alright. That was a question? Also, it doesn't seem to be 3 over 70. Oh, whatever. I don't know. I forgot. <laughs> So, if the smallest number is 2, then 
Um, is there any triangle possibilities? Yeah, Carlos is second. Wait. Oh, you guys are doing that. Okay. Two ninths. Wait, okay. Um, first question is kind of boring, I guess. If there's two, you can't have any anything else. If you look at it, like, two, three, five doesn't work. Two, thirteen, uh, two, eleven, thirteen doesn't work. Nothing works. So there's nothing here. Uh, if there's three, it has to be three, five, seven. Or three eleven thirteen. Uh, if you have a five, you can have five seven eleven, five eleven thirteen, and five thirteen seventeen. And if all the f uh, numbers are seven or greater, then all four combinations work. So all four choose three equals four work. Um, I think. So you get nine over. How many total kisses are there? Thirty-five, which is seven choose three. So you get nine over thirty-five, I think. Is that right? <laughs> Yeah. So, okay. Um, the probably that okay, so it goes like J C M, right? And there's a half chance that Juan just gets um the the heads right away. And then the chance that Carlos gets it first is one fourth, and then one eighth, and so on. Um, we could continue doing this. We could do a series, but yeah, we we could do that. Uh, you get one fourth plus one thirty second plus etc. And by geometric series formula, this equals one fourth over one minus one eighth equals two sevenths. Um, we could also do it another way. Um, okay, so if all three people flip their uh, flip the um, flip their coins already and none of them got heads, then it's basically the same as just repeating, right? Repeating the question again. Okay, Amy, I got thirteen. Yeah, I got thirteen. Um, what did I miss? Fifteen I didn't do, and twelve I was, I forgot to multiply by two. <laughs> Wait, is that a pun? Noise, noise, instead of nice. That's interesting. I don't know if that's intentional or not. Yeah. Um, okay, so, so the other solution is, if, if all three roll head, uh, if all three roll tails, then we can just repeat, right? We can just repeat and so we only have to consider the cases where at least one of them get heads. So the probability that Carlos, the the way that number of ways that Carlos can get heads, um, I mean, okay, it's almost like conditional probability. It's the probability that Carlos gets heads first is uh, one fourth um, on the first try, on on the first run, right? And then the probability that at least one of them get heads is seven eighths. So you can also get it like this, because if 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 you don't get no if no one gets heads, then it repeats again. If that makes sense. Um, but I mean, geometric series is obviously much easier. Also, we'll go over that later, I guess. My video is off. Okay. All right. Um. So I guess we just got through all the probability parts. 
Um, I guess, you know, class is over, I guess, but uh, if you have any questions, of course, I'll stick around for a while. Any questions about anything in probability ever? Why do we multiply by a half? Are you talking about what Rohan wrote up there? I mean, Benjamin, I guess, wrote it. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why you multiply by two. I mean, you just, like, divide it by two and multiply by two. I don't know. Um, I mean, you can just look at this thing over here, right? I'll do it in red. Uh, it's just it's just this series. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know why you would wait. Multiply by half. Not two. I'm not sure. I mean, I think it'd be more like. Um, Um, where does it say half? I'm not sure. Like on my on my slide or like up there? Oh yeah. Um. Okay, so this thing here. Okay, the probability that Juan gets a heads on the first try is half, right? And then the probability that Carlos gets a half. Uh, gets a heads on the first try. You have to make sure Juan doesn't get a um, heads, and then Carlos has to get a heads. So, like, if if you're if you're if you're Manu, or whatever, um, you you have to hope that both Juan and Carlos don't get heads, and then you get heads. So you, it would have to be half that they don't get heads, and then half that they don't get heads again, and then half that you get heads. So that would be half times half times half, which is one eighth. And it keeps going, just multiplying by a half each time. Hey, look, it's it's correct grabber. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. No, don't do the know you thing. What? It's a lot of spaces. Okay. All right, guys. Okay, so I actually have like a whole thing about binomial coefficients, and I have lots of stuff here: identities, more identities, uh, Amy number seven. <laughs> we don't have to talk about that one. And then we have homework here. Um, the first six questions are just probability. Only the last question is not. Um, in the probability section. So, yeah. You got this. I guess this is the homework for this week. Uh, the first six questions. The seventh one is part of the binomial thing. All right. Um, I guess all of you are still here for some reason. Um, any other questions or discussions or random comments or spam? Alright. Thanks guys. Um hey, see you next week, hopefully. Alright, bye. What is this? Average was one. Wait, how could the average be one if you got a twenty? Twenty-two. The recording, hopefully today, soon. Yeah. I should probably stop recording. All right, if you're on the recording, bye guys. I don't know why you even listened this far. All right, bye.